For the rest of the shower project, now I've got to mount the sump pump. And our shower has a pan and a drain. And in order to pump it overboard, I need to mount this thing in a convenient location where it can be serviced and accessed. Back here on the uh, port side settee, I got a location where a lot of our plumbing stuff goes. With the crooked shape of the hull, I need to build this thing up onto a shelf. The first thing I need to do is get the shelf pieces that I cut installed down on the floor and then I can mount the pump. So down here below the forward end of the uh, port side settee, I've got a place marked out where I can mount a shelf. The location's fine. The curve of the hull and everything is making it so I gotta get creative with it. So what I did was cut some parts. I'm gonna have the shelf mounted here, a few inches off the floor, and I have another piece bracing that basically right about here. This is gonna be interesting. It's isolated, it's got isolation mounts built into the pump, but I've also got some strips of foam that I'm gonna put down uh, before I screw the pump to the shelf. Groovy. I've also got these things, these little cleats go on the sidewall. And I've already made marks, so that goes right there. Got a pretty funky shelf with a cantilever that sticks out, but it should be secure. And there we go. That ought to resonate nicely through the hole when the pump's running. And there's the platform for the 12 volt pump. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is stick the foam down. All right. The pump doesn't rub on anything. It's got room to move in the isolation mount. So just for the sake of seeing, let's see what happens. Uh, temporarily ran a couple of short leads of wire and I'm just gonna hit the positive terminals of the ElectroScan just to see how much noise it makes. It's not that bad. This thing does work, it pumps, it's in a little bit of rough shape. Uh, you can see it's a little bit rusty. Uh, it used to be mounted up behind the breaker panel underneath the companionway. I think I like it better here. These things are capable of running dry, so that's not a big deal. The rebuild kit's about a hundred and, uh, it's about a hundred bucks. But uh, yeah, so that's it for now. I'm waiting for, on some plumbing parts to get delivered. So let's do some plumbing now. And what we're gonna do is hook up the pump to the shower sump and the overboard discharge. So we got the shower grate and that all comes down to a hole down here. And that, that is under the floorboard. So right here, coming out the shower sump, we've got this threaded fitting. That is what the sump pump is gonna hook up to. We'll plumb the shower pump and the overboard discharge through the through hole fitting. So the first thing I need to do is disconnect the sink drain and all that and add on to the through hole overboard discharge. I'm just gonna cut the hose because it's easier to replace than it is to salvage. The next part is I've got to rotate this 90 fitting vertically. So I got the 90 rotated the direction I want it to go. I got the T fitting and the appropriate nipples installed. So what we got is a shared drain. What this thing has to do is take discharge water up through a vented loop and down to here to go out at the water line through the through hole. And also we have this check valve assembly and that thing uh, is the sink drain. So, no, 
got water running through the sink. So the sink drain's hooked up. So the next thing I want to do is hook up the suck side of the shower sump to the inside of the pump. Try and keep this hose from getting a kink. That ain't good. All right, so I'm gonna put this in here. Right. So that's the drain for the shower. And I'm gonna point it up a little bit. So the next thing I need to do is mount the pump strainer. And this thing has a screen, catches hair and whatnot. That needs to go between the pump and the shower sump. Slide this sucker into place. So, there we go. That's the suck. The suck line from the shower sump through the hair strainer. And that connects to the intake side of the shower sump pump. So now I got to install a vented loop up here because the discharge point is lower than the healed water line. So in order to keep ocean water from sucking back into the pump, got to put a vented loop in there. I need to drill some holes down through here to route the rest of the plumbing. So that's the vented loop. Still gives me access to unscrew this thing and clean the check valve from time to time. And that runs down, snug to the hull. Still gives me room in the medicine cabinet. And now the last thing I need to do is hook that hose up to that bronze barb that's sticking straight up in there. So now that all the plumbing's done, I have to make a way to turn it on. I got this switch, it's a rocker switch. On, off, it's lighted. It's got an amber LED in the side of it. I'm thinking I'm gonna put it right about there. Kinda out of the way, but yet easily accessible. All right. See what this looks like. The hole I cut, the switch fits. All right, so let's get this thing wired up. All right, so what I need to do here is hook up the ground, the negative side first. This is going to be the ground, DC ground, or negative side to the pump. This one comes up here. I got a jumper bar here which connects all these four pieces together. So this one's just a short jumper that just connects to the pump terminal. Doesn't look like the pump has any, any polarity. So that's the connection to the pump. That's the ground, the negative. Now I need to fish wire through to the switch. And I got one wire already routed. I got the red from the battery, or from the breaker panel actually. So this is the negative for the switch. So this is the main reason I use this because these number 10 wires, they're too big to do a double butt connector. Like normally I would have, if they were smaller wires, I would go butt connector, butt connector to a reducing butt connector, like yellow, yellow, blue, the two number 10s, they're so big, I had to put in a junction board. So, so here's those three wires I was talking about. The two reds are the switch side that turn the power on and off from the pump. The ground wire, the yellow, is just to supply a negative feed for the LED light that is inside the switch. So according to the wiring diagram on the back of the switch, ground wire goes on top, load, line. All right, switch, 
and pop it in place. There we go. These are the last connections to make. So I need to hook it up to the breaker. I got a 15 amp breaker in there. Before I hook this thing up to the positive side, I'm gonna go ahead and I made some, I got some heat shrink label. This is the LED to the circuit. So there's my 15 amp blue C's connector. Now the negative side. Just connect the ground, done deal. So the shower sump is on, LED is lit. Eventually we're gonna change out all these, order some new labels from Blue Sea. So I guess the only thing left now to do is fill this thing up and test it to see if it works. It seems to work. I got a little problem here. Looks like the diaphragm shot. 